going to talk about low-level Python, uh, the Python, the implementation of C Python. So we all love Python, but you know what we all love as well? We love violence. We like to argue with each other about the most stupid things we can ever imagine. Like we were told to write more objects, we were told to write fewer objects. But I think that none of this actually matters if we don't understand the underlying you know, implementation of Python. So Python is basically OOP to the bottom. We have magic methods, and we have class methods, and static methods, and we, you can do even funky stuff like, I don't know, context manager with a generator, or, you know, other OOP nonsense. And Python is also functional to the bottom. You have map, reduce, and all of those filters and stuff that are functional. But you're probably asking yourself, why would I care? So you cannot do both. And there's a really, there is an answer for that, to what is the best thing, best thing to do. And, it is, and the answer is at the bottom of Python. So in this talk, we're going to talk about C Python. We're going to do so by using the this.py file. Those who doesn't know it, it's a, fi it's a file in Python that is used for disassembling the Python, so the Python bytecode. And showing it in a more human readable form. Another thing, this talk is about Python 2.7.8 because it's really good, and there's gonna be C in this presentation as well. So let's talk about the Python interpreter. First thing to notice is that Python is a bytecode language, and there is the Python interpreter, and basically the Python VM that runs your files. This allows Python to be cross-platform to whatever, to wherever you want because it's the same opcodes for each system. It simulates the opcodes for the processor. So how the compilation actually works. Stages, for, the steps for compilation are the following. You write a py file, then magic, and then you have a .pyc file. And in the pyc file, the first couple of bytes are used to mark the format of that PYC. Why? It's because not all of them is in the, are in the same format. The other couple of bytes are used to mark the timestamp of the creation of that PYC. This is how your interpreter knows when to compile the file again, or, or just use the PYC that it had. All right, so when you download the C Python sources, you get these directories. Grammar is used for the magic before Python is for the PyVM that we're going to dive into right now. C models is for your C models, objects is for the building objects, and parser is for some more magic. So the first thing that runs when you run something in Python is the main. The main sits in models python.c, it copies the arg field, set locals, and call py main. Let's do a quick warm up. Let's compile this code. Very, very easy. Just put it in a py file. And then we're going to do the following. We're going to use the compile command to test on test.py. On, on test and now we get something strange, code object, that has some, I don't know, random stuff in it. Uh, but it also has something interesting, CO code. You see it? Right. CO code is just like binary crepes or something. but when you run it with, when you run the this.py, you get the following. And these are the Python opcodes in the iron line. We can already feel, start to feel the stack based VM here, here, like for real. We load two things to the stack and then just add them and store them somewhere else. It, you can start to feel the stack, stack based VM here. But let's say that we want to, I don't know, understand one opcode. All of them sits in Python opcodes.h. Here are all of them. And let's say that we want to understand the implementation on all of, of some of them. The only interesting thing, the most interesting file is c eval file.c. Basically, this file says the following for blah 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 something, get the opcode, blah blah blah, for each opcode, just the implementation of that opcode. Anyone who want to get into the Python sources, go into that file, it's the most interesting one to start with. All right, the interpreter design is the following. 
We have a linked list for the interpreter state. Each state holds the current running threads with the main thread, pointer to the main thread. Each thread has something interesting called the frame stack, which we're going to get into in a second. Frame holds the current scope of your code. And this is an interesting thing. Let's say that, I don't know, you wake up in the morning and think this is, this is a good code or something. And then you try to run it and get the following. This is a great opportunity to look at the frame stack because the trace specs are created when, when you do something stupid in your code, then a trace spec object is created and just passed through all your frame, through all the pointers. And the frame stack look the following. Each frame is represented by a pi frame object. Everything is an object. And when you recursively go into a function, you basically create a new frame, which, is go, which goes to the file that we saw before. And this file extracts the code object from this frame. And this code object has CO code. And these are the bytecodes of the actual code. All right. The main, again, ceval.c has a function called by eval, eval, eval frame x. It's not, it, it's like a huge file. This the biggest loop in the Python sources, and this is the implementation of the stack-based PyVM that is actually running your code. So anyone interested, dive into that. These are the frame objects actually look in the C implementation. I don't, I'm not going to cover all of them, but you can see here the CO code we talked about before. But look at something in interesting. Everything here is by object. But the thing is, you can easily see that they're not from the same type. So something here is really interesting. This is, here is by eval, eval, eval code X that is actually running your file. I won't get into the actual implementation, but you can see that you fetch the globals and you have anything else, everything else that you ever wanted in your frame object. All right. All the objects in Python are reference counted. Not a big secret, everyone knows that. There are four opcodes for, there are four macros for increasing or decreasing the reference counting of an object. X is for whether or not to check if your object is none or not. Now get this, each object has a type in Python, but everything is an object. So type is also an object, but because it's an object, it has a type as well. And its type is itself. So the thing is, I, I think that they, take, they took this way, way, way too, too much. But the whole, this whole everything is an object thing, but have your own thoughts about that. Anyway, what they did is the following. All the objects have their reference count and their type. In order to define another type of an object, let's say, I don't know, a buffer or a number, you just add a variable to the struct. That's it. It's done for polymorphism. So if you want to look at all the object types that come with Python, there are it's a bit cut, but they are in objects.c, I think. And just for, you know, just for us looking, incrementing, adding to integer object gets to pi int objects and just add them together. So let's talk a bit about memory management in Python, how Python, mem how Python actually implements memory management. We start with something called the arena list. Each arena holds a malloced, pre malloced 256K. In each of those, in each of those, we have it split it up to 4K pools. And each of those 4K pools is built from the following struct pool header and free list. Free list is the following is just a linked list of what cells are empty. I think, I'm not sure if these are 8K, no, 8 bytes, I think. Anyway, uh, I think that in one, in one of the versions, they had a problem that in like a funky situation, there was a loop in here. 
So it's trying to, to free stuff over and over again, free stuff that are freed or rigmalloc stuff, and just terrible things happen, computer crashes or something. Anyway, how the interpreter actually knows what pools inside all of this mess are actually empty, it has another, another array which is called static pool P, used pools, you can pull, bloop, used pools, and it holds a bidirectional list to the pool headers that we saw before in the struct that hold the pre malloc the pre malloc memory. All right, functions or objects as well. Okay, when you write a function, you basically create a five function object that holds the globals and a code object that we've seen before. They are executed by pi eval 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 frame x and etc. All right, I think we've all seen that in a lifetime functions has a func code, which is exactly a code object that has a CO code. It's not that interesting. And this is how it looks like. And again, I'm not going to cover it in detail. Function calls are again in by eval, eval, eval frame x, I think, maybe eval code. I'm, I'm not, no, no, when you create a function, you basically create frame in the underlying and then it's go, it goes again to the same file. But let's leave that aside. I don't want to get into the actual implementation because you don't have time. But here is the fun exercise. If you have Python 2.2.7.8, write a function with 78,370, not 80, not 60, 70 local variables and see what happens. Just have fun. All right. What is the output of this? I'm waiting. Icon is ready, you can do it. I can wait here all day. Yes. 11 and 21. You know how the interpreter knows this? It's something that we've seen before. It has something called a closure. Each function holds another thing that is called a closure. Closure represents the closure of the scope of the function. Basically, when you get to that, then you jump to the next, to, to, you jump to the previous function that, is, that called you, now you use their locals and globals, and when you don't find the, the variable that you needed, you just dump, jump up and up and up again until you get to the globals of the global. This is how this mess spaghetti code actually runs. Speaking about spaghetti code, if you take a look at the Python sources, you will find something pretty not good. Let's call it like that. Everything in Python sources is done, is done with go-tos, because I think it was, I think, in issue 4007 something, I don't really remember. Someone just find out that you can use GCC for, for jumping to dynamic labels. And he just thought, oh, well, we can save time. And now the whole Python sources are just one big spaghetti code mess because everything goes to just everywhere. And it's because of that. So lesson from this, stupid stuff still compiles. And another thing, everything is an object. I don't think we should get into that, but interesting, it's interesting to know that ifs are implemented with jumps, as you probably imagine. And now let's talk about iterators. Anyone here in the room probably have done everything once in their life, or I in something. Basically what you do is you call dundle iter, and you get an iterator object, iterator objects hold Iterator objects hold a reference to what iter iterable object it refers to and a next value. Yeah, again. And this is how get iter actually works like. But an interesting thing here is the following. In a sequence, in a simple sequence, the only thing you do is just get an iterable and increment. 
All right, generators. Generators, generator expression is always a generator function, which is always an iterator, which always has a get next and produce the next values pretty lazy. So, but the thing is that it's a function with the state. And it doesn't work like that in real life. So you guessed it. It's a generator object that again holds a code and a frame which is referred to. And this is how it looks like. And this is how it looks like in when, when you decompile the code. Basically, you have basically the only thing that is interesting here is the yield value. And what actually happens is that it calls the generator CO code and yields the value at the end. And the generator codes in the generator repo code is holding the locals and the globals of the generator itself. Generator object. All right. When you write a class object out of your own, you create a Py class object. Each class in Python have three main things. It has its name, its base class, and a method D. An instance only holds its self. When I'm saying self, I mean I mean the object self. This is the interesting thing here. When you call something from an instance, the code is called from the class with, and the variables are sent, are sent from the self. So this is the interesting thing here, is that Python is doing that to save some more memory and not to, and not to replicate the code a couple of times. So build class, it's a pretty documented function. The only thing it gets is a method dictionary and names of the base class, and it creates your class. By the way, it's written, it's written with K, class with K. Anyway, class creation goes the follows. Basically, you, you call the meta class. Meta class is a function that is used for the creation of your class. You leave it a couple of, you leave it a couple of dicts. Then it, ins then it calls, then the interpreter calls, sorry, the meta meta class of the interpreter calls your meta class running its new function that init's the instance of your object, and then you get your in and then you get your instance. Right, here is how it looks like in the Python sources. You have here the class object, you have the instance object, and you have the method object. They're not that interesting because everything everything at the end runs runs pretty similar because the whole thing of the pi object thing is that all of them holds, at the beginning, the struct, all of them holds the same exact variables. This is how they use for polymorphism, and then you can, then they iterate over them, and they have, they have different functions in the underlying, but you can iterate over them because they all have the same API in the underlying. This is how they mimic the polymorphism mechanism in C. All right, so we've gone through a lot. Let's talk about what we've gone through in the time that we've, we actually have a lot of time, right? Five minutes. So everything is an object. Not everything that, is, that looks complicated is actually complicated. You need to understand what you're doing in order not to be trapped. And you need to understand what you're, not, what you're doing in order not to be trapped. And I don't really have an answer for the functional versus OOP because it's a tough question and there, and there is no right answer. That's it. Questions? I'm asking myself the same question. Uh, but I think that they use it to, for, for everything to have the same API. So you can, you know, I don't know, if you want to derive type to be a lambda or something, I don't know, derive from type and lambda and if, they're all objects. I don't know, why would, would you do that? But they really, really like to keep the same API for everything. So I think this is the answer. Anyone else? Yeah. I'll give you a good example. You know, 
All right. The question was, why would we care? I mean, we all use Python. Why would we care? Why would, you, why would we go to in, in the internals of the C implementation of everything? The funny thing is that Python programs are really good at keeping their memory not fragmented because of memory issues, but the memory mechanism. But the thing is, they nearly never give back memory to the operating system. You know why? Because if you have one cell in one pool, in one arena that holds something, it cannot give away all the other memory. So you can only know that if you know how the mechanism of the memory actually works. I think it's for your own understanding. Well, if, if you have infinite resources, you don't need anything. But you, know, you can just, I don't know, run, random generate code and hope that you will learn on, land on whatever you need. Anyone else? Yeah. All right. Why C Python? Because it's the most common. It's not. It's not Python. It's C Python. Let me 